God bless you. It's great to be here already. Let me just quickly do a couple of announcements. I am going to, um, though I will be sharing at the luncheon, I want to come out after my session to meet some of you out at the table. And uh, let me explain very quickly. I have a number of things that are here, like all the rest of the speakers, but I have a whole group of books, about four of them or so, that I have put at a fire sale for women on the front lines only, okay, at this event, that they are $10 off. So what that means is this devotional, Empowered Women, is normally $17 or $18. You will get this at $10 off. You're going to get this for $7 this week, okay? And it is, it's not because this materials that I've discounted aren't good. They're great. I want to get them in your hands. This is one of the best contemporary reads on the prophetic. Brings you up to date. I've marked it $10 off. Adventures in the Prophetic. A chapter by Patricia King, three by myself, three by Bonnie Shavdas and my uh, dear friend, Mickey Robison. A chapter by my late wife, Michael Ann, is in here as well. So those are a couple of, and there's two or three others that are as well, like Call to the Secret Place and God Encounters, maybe a couple of others, that are all at $10 off. So you're getting them for like $6, stuff like this. I have two new things, uh, books, actually three that are out there, because I always have something new. This is The Lost Art of Pure Worship. I only did three chapters, but I wrote the intro, the exit, and I uh, put it together. And then also other wonderful people, like some little unknown prophetess named Julie Meyer, has a great chapter in here. And then Chris Dupre, who was in Kansas City, that is in Franklin, Tennessee, he wrote three of the chapters, and he's the one who wrote the song, Dance With Me, O Lovers of My Soul. And then there is a Sean Foyt and others. And there's this beautiful, attractive young lady that's here on the back. That's my youngest daughter, and she wrote the chapter on cultivating a culture of worship. So that is a new book that was picked by Charisma Magazine in the top 10 reads for the, the year in 2012, and it was listed as the number three top book for you to read. And then this is the newest. It is just out for only, it's only been out for maybe two months at the very most, exploring your dreams and visions. But what it is, is a personal revelatory journal. I've wanted to do this for years. I teach this to people, but then there's what I call lessons. They're short. You know, like the 20 most occurring dreams and tips for interpreting and how to journal and, and a revelation is full of symbolism. And then I teach you how to journal. And you date it. And you, time, uh, you put the location, type of experience. You summarize it. You, you put what's the primary feeling? Where were you in the experience? Those two issues right there alone are the two top first keys for properly interpreting your revelatory experiences. Where are you located in the experience? And number two, what is the primary emotion? And then I have you write out a scripture. I have you write out a possible application. And then write out a prayer to correlate with your revelation. So this is, helps you to learn what I call your spiritual alphabet. And so would you stand now uh, while I turn the corner and I go into this message. Father, I thank you right now for this time. I declare that your word will go forth. It will not return void, but accomplish the purpose for which it's been sent. And I just thank you so very much for the 16th Annual Women on the Front Lines Conference. We just bless God TV right now and Rory and Wendy Alec in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the expansion of the word that it will grow and increase as in the book of Acts. And, and we declare as, out of Isaiah, your word will go forth and it will not return void. And I draw on the Holy Spirit today. And I call forth fruit, more fruit, much fruit, and fruit that remains. And we call on the Holy Spirit as the gift giver. 
And we call forth you, the dancing hand of God, you who Jesus called the finger of God. We release you right now in the name of the Lord of hosts to stir up gifts, to impart gifts, to bring to our remembrance words that have been previously spoken to us. And I ask for your grace right now that I can be able to frame out some of what you have been speaking to me over the last several weeks. And as I present this message to you and to these wonderful people, eight clear words. And I thank you for this time in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. You can be seated. I want us to start by looking at a simple scripture that most of us know. It is found in Matthew. How do you mean you think it's a good idea to read your Bible? Okay, thank you very much. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 52. And Jesus said, I like it already. And Jesus said, come on. I, 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 I like the whole book, but I really even more like the red letters. Okay, anyway. And Jesus said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has become a disciple. Ah, for some people, you're stuck in the 70s and you're still fried and you're burned and you don't even like that word. Get over it. It's in the Bible. It's a really good word. Being a disciple. I don't want to just be a believer. I want to be a disciple. Now look what it says we're to be a disciple of. A disciple of the kingdom. That's a big message in itself, but it's not one of my points. Therefore, every scribe who has become a disciple of the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household. Oh, this is going to be great. How many of you want to be a disciple of the kingdom of heaven? Raise your hand. Now it's going to say, you're, if you want to be a disciple... You're supposed to be the head. Hmm. In other words, like Deuteronomy, you're the head and not the tail. And it says, the head of a household. This is not gender exclusive. Let me give you a hint. This word is gender inclusive. Now, you didn't get that. This word about being a head of a household is not about men. This is a word spoken to any believer who wants to be a disciple. You get the opportunity to be the head, not the tail. Now that's worth somebody manifesting, giving a shout or a shaba or something, okay? Hey, this is not even one of my points. The heaven is like the head of a household, watch this, who brings out of his treasure. So you need to have a treasure. You need to have a treasure chest. And that a disciple, not just a believer, a disciple does something amazing. Brings out of their treasure chest things new and I love to tell the story of unthings things above of Jesus and his glory of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story come on help me out because it is so true it satisfies my longings like nothing else can do I love to tell the story twill be my theme in glory to tell the old and new story 
No, I changed a couple of words. His old and his new story because Matthew 13, 52 says, a head of a household, a disciple of the kingdom of heaven brings forth treasures both new and old. I love the old story. But I'm also into letting the Holy Spirit breathe upon the written word and it becomes a current revelant rhema spoken word and it becomes new every morning. So I am to honor all that has gone before us. And so we honor in the old story the women on the front lines. We honor the St. Teresa of Avila's, of the interior castle. We honor the Joan of Arcs who laid down her life and was burned at the stake for her faith and saved the nation of France from invasion. We honor the stories of so many others, of the Gwen Shaw, of the end time handmaidens who have just recently graduated unto her promotion into the kingdom of heaven. We honor the Catherine Booths. We honor the Amy Simple McPhersons. But we not only honor the brand name. We honor any and every believer throughout Jewish and church history who have feared God, obeyed his commandments, and have been a disciple of the kingdom. Hey, let's thank the Lord for all of the little servants. We thank you, God. And so we honor with the culture of the culture of honor the old and we learn from it and it becomes fresh to us and then we must be progressively reaching for the new. Having framed it out in such a manner, let me give to you some of what the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me in recent years. Often at these particular gatherings, I try to frame out a women specific message. I'm not doing that this year, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm giving just a message to believers, disciples, period. That is relatable to all of us. Eight clear words that the Holy Spirit is speaking. Number one, and these are declarations. Number one, I am declaring the door of the harvest is open. I am declaring the door of the harvest is open. Do you hear me? Did you hear me? I am declaring the door of the harvest is open. Now what I did not say is that the door of the great harvest is open. I do not know that. But this last fall, in the period of time around the Day of Atonement and the 10 days of all, I had an experience in God. These are revelatory, subjective experiences, but nonetheless, they are absolutely true in my kipper or something or another, whatever that thing is in there. You know, it's just like, yes, okay? I had an experience. A door literally opened. A wind blew through a door. I heard the sound of the wind and I turned to see and hear the sound of the wind. And when I did, I said, what is this? And the Holy Spirit immediately spoke to me and said, the door of the harvest is open. Did you hear me? I'm not waiting any longer. The door of the harvest is now open. This is a day of salvation. In Joel 3.13 it says, Put in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. This is one of those hours. There are times and seasons. 
there's times of movements and I will be building up every one of these points they were going to build one upon another but I tell you it is a time of the door of the harvest being open I did not know that Lou Engel the founder of the call was calling for something called ekbalo whatever an ekbalo is no. And I was starting to preach from Luke 10 and Matthew 9, 38. And this is the prayer request of Jesus. And my first scripture to go, and I have a scripture for every one of my points, is the door of the harvest is open. It is Jesus said to his disciples, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he sends laborers into the field. That is the hour we are now in. We are in a strategic time. But unless the laborers go forth, when the fields are ripe unto harvest, the harvest can rot in the field. So therefore, the Lord speaks to us and he says, we are co-laborers, and I am asking you to do something in my behalf. I am asking you to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he, Ekbalo, he violently thrust forth laborers into the field. I was just ministering in Ohio a couple of weeks ago at a small church. I was there with some of the HIM apostolic team members and <clears throat> the Holy Spirit spoke to me on Sunday. I knew what my messages were, the three different, four different messages I was doing at the conference. Came to Sunday morning, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Just like the rest of you. And I'm going totally dependent upon God. Yes, I can pray over tongues over 100, 500 different messages I have and microwave them, okay? But I didn't want to. And so I'm going, God, what do you have? And he said... The door of the harvest is open. I said, yeah, I know. That's one of my points. I preached it last night. And he says, well, do you believe it? I says, well, yeah, I believe it. He says, well, then cast a net today. Cast a net today. Guess what happened? I spontaneously did a teaching, which I'm not going to do right now, through Acts 13. And I talked about people, five that are brought together, prophets and teachers, from five different ethnic backgrounds, and they minister to the Lord together. Then I start just going around, laying hands on people, and it ended up that I didn't know this, but there was a man who had told his wife, who had come to church once in her lifetime, and they were a Hindu couple, and he'd never been to church in his lifetime, in a small town in Ohio. And he tells his wife, who tells the masseuse, massage therapist, I want to meet the holy man. So the massage therapist tells the wife to tell the Hindu husband, who's never heard Jesus and never been to church, that the most holy man is going to be there on Sunday morning. Now, I've never had a billing like that before in my lifetime. So this Hindu couple comes to hear the most holy man. And I am just now, they don't even know that that's not like, you know, to me it is normal church, but to a bunch of you out there, that's abnormal church. Well, they had never been to church. They didn't know. So I just go, I don't even know who they are. I go lay hands over my prophesy or that he was a man who feared God. He raises his hands in the middle of the whole thing and a Hindu couple who never heard Jesus, who's never been to church, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. The door of the harvest is open. Would you say that with me? The door of the harvest is is open number two that one was a good start come on say good start James now I gotta talk faster number two it's time to release the kingdom of peace it's time to walk in and release the kingdom of peace Romans 14 17 says that 
This kingdom that we are to be a part of, it is not a kingdom of eating and drinking. But the kingdom of God is a kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy, and it's located somewhere in the Holy Spirit. It's not located in the news. It's not located in, 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 in even good movies. Sometimes it is. <laughs> I really love good movies. Anyway, that's another story. Anyway, I've got to back out of that. But, but the kingdom of God has a location. It's actually in a person called Holy Spirit. And in this hour, when we have craziness like physical cliffs and this and that and now it's Cyprus and then it's going to be Spain some, or whatever. I'm not prophesying right now. I don't think. <laughs> and then we have crisis in the United States. We have crisis in Syria and I'm not underplaying any of this. We have crisis. We have crisis. We have crisis. I have crisis. You have crisis. Let's all just cry. No! Baloney on it all! I am a citizen of another dimension! I am a citizen, I have a passport that is of the United States of America, but I have a passport called Citizen of Heaven. And I'm a disciple of the kingdom of heaven. And I have another realm. I create zones. And I have another realm I walk in. And the one I want to accent right now is the kingdom of peace. Anxiety, anxiety. Out of Nashville years ago, there was an ugly song that came out. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Oh. If I, you know, I rebuke that song in the name of Jesus. Are you with in the name? I had to do that better. In the name of Jesus. Okay, no. I call forth that we rise up to another place and we release the kingdom of peace. And I declare, you create atmospheres and you shift cultures and you can invade people's zones from being fearful and anxious and instead of looking at their checkbooks and going, ah, how's the electric bill going to get paid? I declare checks. I declare abundance. I declare multiplication of your oil. I declare we are walking in the kingdom of peace. You say, well, that doesn't take a prophet to say that. No, it doesn't. But it does take a disciple. Number three, clear word. And this is one of my favorites out of all eight. It's time to push the restart button. Dude, I am so like smoking hot on this one. It's just like, yo, baby. I wish I had five hours to talk on this one point. Point number three. Push, say this. Put your hand on your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. push my restart button. <laughs> How many of you have some dreams that haven't been fulfilled? How many of you ever have a, a, a Holy Spirit word or a prophecy or, or a promise in the word and it hasn't yet been fulfilled? There are times and seasons, there truly are. And in me processing and going from what I am still declaring the decade of difficulty into a decade of destiny, I believe that there are cycles. And I believe that God does give promises and he does give appointments and God is faithful even when we are faithless. But I believe that there are cycles in God and I believe that we are entering into a cycle, a new cycle right now. And this cycle is a restart button getting pushed. Some of you have tasted of revivals, you have tasted of renewal, you have tasted of restoration. 
But I am simply here to say God is a God who does not quit and he does not uh, 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 he is not faithless concerning his promise even when we are faithless God remains faithful and I say to you the finger of God is pushing your button right now you might be a little older you mean, might be like me and have less hair may it not be but as for me and my house, and for all of the sphere of influence that I carry, I am calling forth the restart button to be pushed. Put your hand on your heart again right now. See again, Jesus called the Holy Spirit the finger of God. So, excuse me, some of my colloquialisms might not translate that best into foreign languages, but you, you can try. Finger me, God. <laughs> Push the restart button. In Jesus' name, for promises, appointments and destinies to be fulfilled in Jesus name Proverbs 24 16 if you need a verse the righteous fall down seven times but it doesn't finish there it says they arise again right now I am becoming more in tune with the resurrected one and that resurrected one in the new creation realities lives inside of me. So that means the power of resurrection lives and dwells inside of me. So my arising is less dependent upon me in a sense as it is me relying on the resurrected one who lives inside of me. He is wanting to arise and call us up into fresh hope in Yeshua's name number four my fourth clear word is come again Holy Spirit say it with me it feels really good to say this come again holy spirit now say it out to him right now come again holy spirit i was with dr chayon in brazil in july and we were ministering together at some different apostolic gatherings che turned to me and asked me to pray about something very specific and i did in his behalf and the Lord answered his request, but he gave me an entire visitation out of our relationship and out of me seeking the Lord and out of God's faithfulness. I must do this very quickly. But in an experience, I was hovering like an eagle, and this eagle was looking for a place to land. And I believe there's many places that the Holy Spirit is looking to land. And I was shown the entire west coast of North America. And the Holy Spirit spoke to him and he said, Don't call the west coast the left coast. And that's a full laden statement that I cannot develop. But don't call the west coast the left coast. And then I saw some things shift that are very difficult to explain. And I saw Southern California becoming one of the birthing wombs of the body of Christ. Of a first wave, a second wave, of a third wave, the Jesus people movement, many things. And many places in the earth have been birthing wombs for God. But I must move forward. I then flew on the back of an eagle into a place called Mott Auditorium. 
where there had been previously three straight years of visitations, and I was there for many of those gatherings and many of those conferences. There are places that God just calls and considers sacred, and there are wounds. And I flew into that place, and it was saturated. It was saturated not in this situation as much with great preaching, although that is good. It didn't deal with as much with intense intercession, but in this visitation, there were short declarations. It was declarations. But what it was, there were two things. There were people that were abandoned in worship to the audience of one. Radical, raw. It was so raw, it could not be controlled. It was raw, unrehearsed. Total, raw, unrehearsed worship to the audience of one. And then all of a sudden, shoo, John Wimber, who has been in heaven for 15 years, showed up on the platform. And John Wimber, a vineyard leader, an apostolic messenger of the third wave movement in heaven for 15 years, and he was known for signs and wonders and the church growth institute that he worked with Peter Wagner, and he was known to make a statement, and it was, come Holy Spirit. In this visitation, John Wimber shows up, and he says, come again, Holy Spirit. And when he did, sound waves went out, riveted on the voice, and people crashed to the floor. Miracles broke out, healing signs and wonders, not by prayer lines, and I love prayer lines, not by even just anointed vessels, and I love anointed vessels. He said it a second time, come again, Holy Spirit, and hundreds more crashed under the waves of that sound. He said it a third time, and when he did, and this is the microwave version, an earthquake was released from the sound of come again, Holy Spirit. And it was a church quake. It was an earthquake that became a global church quake. And it related to Psalm 57 that I do not have the time to develop. And then one of our women on the front lines shows up in the great cloud of witnesses. And I hear Jill Austin laugh. I see her in peering in from the, a cloud rolled in upon the event. And I hear her laugh. And she said, ha, ha, ha. I told you he would come again. <laughs> and then I saw Amy Simple McPherson of the Signs and Wonders Movement, Evangelist Temple, peer in. And she was very intrigued. And one of the things in my knower was she was intrigued because what was happening didn't revolve around one person, one anointed healer, one anointed revivalist. It was an amazing all saints believers movement out of the culture of worship then the whole thing shifts I wake up out of the experience some other things happen and then I see a black man on a po white pogo stick and he's blind in one eye and he's jumping all over and he's jumping he's jumping and he's full of happiness and glee and it seemed as though that there maybe were some things that he was promised that he didn't see come to pass in his life and it was global in nature and this one-eyed, black-eyed man started hopping all over the place. And the first place he hopped to in my visitation was Adelaide, Australia. Do you know what's going on in Adelaide, Australia right now? My friend Jeff Jansen is just into three straight weeks of outpourings in Adelaide, Australia. First place he landed was Adelaide, and then it was into Sydney, and it was in Melbourne. It was all across Australia. He went to Hong Kong, and went to Shanghai, and, and went to all across the Pacific Rim. And, and then there were about 120 or more people on pogo sticks for whatever reason, pogoing all over the world. And wherever they would come down, a city would light up with light. Now, as I observed this, because it went on, it went all, all across Europe, all across North and South America, it was global in nature but it was all centered around a raw, unrehearsed worship 
to the audience of one. Some of the cities would have sustained light, and when the light would remain on, others, the lights faded, and I felt it had possibly something to do with whether you received the third person of the Godhead or not. Come again, Holy Spirit. Would you say that with me from your heart one more time? Come again, Holy Spirit. Spirit, when the Holy Spirit shows up in a manifested way, all things are possible. A scripture that you could give, and there's many you could give, would be Joel 2, 28, 29. And after these things, I will pour forth my spirit upon a little bit of flesh. I'm going to visit the children. No, after these things I will pour forth my spirit upon all flesh. By the way, I'm going back to the first point. The door of the harvest is open. And we pray to the Lord of the harvest that you send forth holy, abandoned, apostolic companies of men and women to the four corners of the earth for such a time as this. My fifth clear word is create a culture of risk. <laughs> These all go together. The door of the harvest is open. Walk in the kingdom of peace. Push a restart button. Come again, Holy Spirit, and create a culture of risk. If you're going to welcome Holy Spirit, and did you hear what I just said? Some of you know what I just did. Jill Austin taught us his first name is Holy. And she taught us not to say the Holy Spirit. You don't say the Jesus Christ. You say Jesus Christ or the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the Spirit's first name is Holy. Isn't that amazing? He has a first name. His first name is Holy. He's Holy. I mean, that's like... That's not the way a lot of it is taught today. In inordinate, exaggerated teaching on something they call grace, and it's not teaching on grace at all. It's teaching of licentiousness. Bear with me for a moment. I am a man who loves grace. None of us are, are saved by our works, which we do but according to his loving kindness, by according to his grace. But it is grace and truth have come by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Truth without grace leads to legalism. Grace without truth leads to licentiousness. But grace and truth wedded together lead to wholeness, integrity, and true freedom. And when you welcome Holy Spirit again, you have just messed up your agenda. I'm going before God right now, and I'm going like, well, I'm in a time in my life where it's like, if you want to say something very unusual to me, you could, and I'd be willing to do it, because I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, and I'm not taking any applications, <laughs> and so I'm free. Do you realize I'm free? I mean, it's amazing. I mean, oh, well, that's a whole big subject, but it's like create a culture of risk. I mean, I could move to Israel if I wanted to. I mean, I could have a whole big lifestyle change and it's like, and whatever, or whatever, you know? You know what? It's not just about me getting a Holy Spirit re-push button push. It's not just about me saying, come again, Holy Spirit. When we say, come again, Holy Spirit, we are creating a culture of risk. Luke 17, 6 
All it takes is a little bitty, 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 bitty seed. A mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds. And that thing produces one of the biggest bushes that there is. And it produces something called faith. And to walk in a culture of risk, it takes fresh faith. It takes doing something daring. I'm a little afraid he's going to invade our fear zones. I want you to do it again. Say, come again, Holy Spirit. And realize if you just said that from your heart, you just opened up yourself to be one risky person. That's number five. Number six, and these complement and overlap. One of the clear words the Holy Spirit is saying is, welcome a fresh presence worship movement. Welcome a fresh presence-based worship movement. Listen to this one. Psalm 22, 27 says, All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will worship before you. Now I'm going to read it again. You didn't get it. I didn't get it either. Psalm 22, 27, I'm, I'm beginning to get it. All the ends of the earth, all, all the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families on over here and seven cultural mountains one of her major ones is the family mountain and it says to all the families of the nations it says all of them it says all of the families of the nations we'll do what worship they're all going to worship before you so we say oh well that's for the millennial age James don't you know that well, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But I've heard of people who historically and in the here and now look into the promises of the future and they bring them into there now. So wherever you're from right now, or wherever on God TV you're watching right now, I have a word for you. Welcome a fresh, presence-based worship movement and have whole nights that all you do is worship, 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 worship. And you know what? When you do that, you get ministered to. Because the, the bowls get filled, they tip over, and... Those who are ministering unto the Lord are some of the people who get ministered to the most. So my sixth simple clear word is, let's welcome a fresh presence-based worship movement. Come on, I want us to do something. I want us like an ambassadors. Let's welcome an ambassador, but let's welcome a fresh presence-based worship movement. We welcome something new in worship. We welcome new sounds. We welcome the arts. We welcome a fresh renaissance. We say we are called to create a culture of risk. We say come again, Holy Spirit. I call forth new songs that magnify the work of the cross. 
I call forth new songs and lyrics that will magnify the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare fresh trumpets are being released and new worshipers, 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 a global presence worship movement, here we come. You ready for number seven? I wasn't. <laughs> I think for at least 10 years I've been chewing on something. I love eschatology, the study of the end times. I am a binge person, so I'll give some sanity to some of you. When I pray, I pray. When I go, I go. When I'm quiet, leave me alone. When I read, I read. And I'm a binge person. And so when I study something, I get over a hundred books on the subject and I read them. And that's what I do. It is literally just what I do. And it takes time. And I don't always have the grace for it and I find a season and I set it apart and I binge. You know, it's like a person with blind munchies and they, read, they eat the whole bag of chips. <laughs> chips. I love chips. <laughs> By the way, I have a new Keyshawn dog. Her name is Rosie, and Rosie and I like chips. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's really bad. Oh, well. God, I'm getting embarrassed. Oh, well, Jesus. So I sozo myself right now. Okay, tell about it. Cut him off. Okay. okay, I gotta speed this up. This is hard. I just. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. I feel like some fire is falling right now in the name of Jesus. And I tell you what part of the fire is coming for, it's going to deliver us from escapism mindsets. Gloom and despair and escapism, and I'm just hanging on with my fingernails and tail. And I am not going to get one of those 666 chips. I said I like chips, I'm not getting one of those. I think there's healing that's going to happen to gloom and despair in time theology. And the Holy Spirit is going to be renewing our minds and giving us fresh heart in our faith. I worked and worked and worked on this, I think for over a decade, and it never settled within me, and I finally have a terminology. I announced it in January out in Pasadena, and I announce it globally right now through this message and through God TV. And here's what I declare. I declare a paradigm shift towards a glorious eschatology. That was a big subject I just opened up. I didn't say victorious, although I believe in victorious. I didn't even use the word dominion, but I believe in dominion mandate. But you understand some of these terminologies that we have used come with some baggage. But I'll tell you one that doesn't. A glorious eschatology. You see, Isaiah 61 to 3, darkness will cover the earth, so you're not in denial. And even gross darkness will people on the people. But there is a glory that is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the seas. The book of Numbers says so. And Jesus taught us to pray, Kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is already glory. Do you think there's a lack of glory in heaven? 
I don't know what all this looks like, but I am willing for any realm of come upon me glory, and I'm also willing to reach into the redemption work of a new creation reality and reach into something that's called the mystery that has now been revealed, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. I am not dependent upon just better meetings. I have a glory that lives inside of me, and wherever I go, I get to leak out glory. And I get to help shift cultures. A changed person changes culture, and a changed culture can change whole nations. We've left a whole lot of stuff to the millennium. And I am beginning to believe that a whole lot of this is for now. But God's been waiting for a people who would believe him. And so I'm in change and I'm pronouncing an apostolic change. And it is a paradigm shift towards a glorious eschatology. I'm not denying difficult times. I've been through them. I'm tired of them. I'm not denying darkness, but I am pronouncing it is showtime. As Bob Jones said from prophetic revelations of years ago, there is a time that is set aside for the greatest show on earth. Well, I am calling it forth now in Jesus' name. It is time for the greatest show on earth to happen because when darkness covers the earth, behold, light shines the best in darkness. I could take this one subject right there, glorious eschatology, and I could spend probably 10 hours talking with you about it. I am captured by this. I have been chewing on this for probably more than 10 years, and, and I have never been able to find something that fit or described or put it together for me. And finally, finally, I know there's something in me that I want to pronounce. I want to release. I want to see happen. It's more than a proclamation. It's a reality. So is there anybody here that needs to be delivered of escapism mindsets? Uh, I just can't wait to get out of here. It's like Groundhog's Day Christianity. <laughs> we hide, we hide, we hide. And then we come out every now and then, poke our head out to see if the sun is shining or not. <laughs> nope. <laughs> not yet. Oop. Oop. Oh, I'll stay out a little while. Oh, nope, not yet. Oop. No, I'm, we are coming from out of hiding and we are going to experience the greatest great awakening the planet earth has ever seen and I declare I'm excited by the way and I declare a paradigm shift towards a glorious eschatology how many would like to clap and thank the Lord for that that's point number seven Number eight, my last clear word, the Holy Spirit speaking to me, and maybe he'll speak them to you. Speak to your mountain. These all build on one another, and I'm, the preacher's preaching to himself. Speak to your mountain. This is good faith preaching. 
Mark 11, 23. says, you see the mountain? It says, you speak to your mountain. Be removed and cast into the sea. Now, I could stop. And I could only tell you old stories if I wanted to. And I have still enough great old stories that some of you would think that I was still in fresh faith just by telling you all the outrageous good old stories. That I am making an internal decision that I am going to speak to my mountain. It doesn't say wish to your mountain. It doesn't say thank to your mountain. It doesn't even say pray to your mountain. It says speak to your mountain. Because I've heard some crazy extreme woman say, it's a speech activated kingdom. Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, speak to your mountain. But my eighth point for a new beginning is going to take it further than that. Because in Zechariah chapter 4, I, by the way, I still believe in the words of the Old Testament as well as the New. I believe that they're profitable for instruction and encouragement and godliness. Zechariah 4, Zechariah is asleep. An angel touches him, wakes him up, arouses him. Lord, release angels to arouse the body of Christ. And what happens? Zacharias is awakened, sees all amazing visions, starts, and he's asked by the angel, well, what is this? He starts describing it, and then it comes down to this, and he goes, not by might, nor by, it would be your power, your strength. Not by might, nor by power, but by my come again, Holy Spirit. And then it goes on further, and Zechariah is shown mountains. And I'm going to hit this in two levels, and I'm closing. And this is now ministry time. And he has shown mountains. Number one, he's shown mountains of opposition. And he is told to do something concerning the mountains. He isn't told, pray that they be removed. He isn't told, push against the mountain. He is told to shout. He is told to shout to the mountain. Now, what he's told to shout is extraordinarily important. He is told to shout grace. Now, I just gave a brief little tempering to some excessive places of where some on, it's actually not grace, it's licentiousness that's taught. But let me tell you one of the real, true words the Holy Spirit has been breathing on in the last decade is a revelation of grace. Grace. How many of you are thankful for amazing grace? I am so thankful for amazing grace. And do you know how mountains get removed? By grace. By grace. By a revelation of grace. Now, they get removed by doing something. It doesn't hear just say, speak to your mountain. It says, shout. And it shouts, grace. Now, we start somewhere, and so it might be mechanical at first. It's actually shouting about a revelation you have concerning grace. So first of all, we have to get the revelation of grace. So right now, I, I, we ask the God that you give us, wherever we're at, that you take us further in the revelation of amazing grace in Jesus' name. Right now, I want you to picture before you a personal mountain of opposition a personal one and at the count of three we are going to speak shout grace to it three times i want you to see a personal mountain of opposition are you ready you see a personal mountain of opposition at the count of three we're going to shout grace to this one two three grace grace Second, <clears throat> I want you to see a family mountain. A family mountain. I have them. 
We, it is a speech activated kingdom. And it is a shout activated kingdom. I want you to stand to your feet now. We're going to, this is my closing. But I got, but I'm going to do this real fast. We've got to do this fast, folks. You know, you can get healed. You can get delivered. Generational curses can get broken right now. Generational blessings can get released right now. And I want you to see a family problem, problematic mountain. But we're going to look at it and we're going to shout grace to it. One, two, three. Grace! 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 In Jesus' name. One, two more things. One, I want you to see a city mountain. Because this is about personal, it's about family. And then we rise up higher, and it's about our cities. And you're an ambassador of your city, so you have keys of the kingdom. And so now, at the count of three, you're going to see. And so I see a political spirit over the city that I dwell, but I'm going to address something that's a higher realm than it, and I'm going to shout grace to it. You see a, a city issue? Now we're going to shout, one, two, three, grace, 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 in Jesus' name. One last thing in closing. Now we're going to pick one of our seven cultural mountains. I don't have time to teach it. But you're going to pick something, a mountain of destiny. It might be the arts, entertainment. It might be the family. It might be the church. It might be government. It might be education. It might be whatever it is. I don't know. But you, how many of you, you want to you take a mountain? And so now we're going to shout to mountains of destiny. How do mountains of destiny get moved from being out there into here? It is by a revelation of grace. So right now we're going to be a Holy Ghost cowboys and cowgirls. And we're going to reel in influence and we're going to shout to our mountains of destiny and we're going to shout grace three times and then give a big applause to the Lord for what he's done. Ready? One, two, three. Grace! 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 In Jesus' name! Praise the Lord! We thank you, Lord of hosts. May your word that has gone forth not return void, but accomplish all the purposes for which you intend. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see some of you out, in the out at the book table. Amen. God bless you. Wow, what an awesome word. You know, um, how many of you have been spoken to by the Lord personally about is pressing in for grace. How many of you have, have been receiving that? I have, I have had such an emphasis in my devotions over this last few months on that whole subject of grace. It's God's divine influence working upon your life. It's like he's at, at work within you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It is undeserved, un, uh, un, unmerited favor from God upon you, bringing you into his purposes. And you know, when you look at his goodness, when you look at his grace, it actually creates faith in you to accomplish what you see, you know, because it's without striving. It just is so amazing. So I really, really appreciated that uh, message. It was awesome. I, well, you know, and I want to encourage you to get the CD after or the DVD, and then you know, meditate on it, drink it in. There were such good points in that message. Wonderful. Um, all right. So just to tie up, um, we mentioned that um, this afternoon from four. 
45 to 515. We're going to do a book signing. Um, James Gall will be signing books, and um, my sister will be out there, Jane Watridge. And also, I just heard Bonnie Shavda is also going to sign books this afternoon. So um, go to the book table during the lunch period and be before the next session and get what you would like and then take it to the tables afterwards and they'll sign and maybe pray for you and that and you can connect uh, with them um, and that'll be a significant um, time for you I know and also um, for any of our updated announcements um, that you want clarity on we have a whiteboard out there in the foyer so you just check it every once in a while it'll give you directions to places it'll reconfirm um, where meetings are and that and, um, and, and give you announcements that, that you need to um, uh, you know just know what's going on so that you can always check that and of course you've got your bulletins with you that um, share some just things just things for the conference that'll help make your time a little bit more comfortable so God bless you those of you that are going to the speakers lunch you can be dismissed now and 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 work your way over there we're serving lunch at, at uh, 12 45 and then uh, the bookstore will be open and we're going to be back here with um, Sue Ahn is going to be sharing, and she is a real mama in the kingdom, and you're just going to really enjoy her. And we're going to have pre-service corporate praise here with Angela Pinkston at uh, 2.15 to 2.30, and then we'll, we'll begin uh, the uh, worship set um, at 2.30, and uh, that'll, that'll go until um, Sue speaks. So we're going to have a great uh, time this afternoon. God bless you.